and it's the last day of the month. Hello and many thanks for joining TVX as a news in brief. Coming up this morning, President Akofado dams free SHS critics, insisting the policy implementation which end UCC honorary doctorate degree reflects quality and expansion. This morning we shall hear him and a contrary view from Ghana's first female vice chancellor, Professor Nana Jin Opoku Ajiman. This morning, Kaswa Newtown Zongo demands immediate completion of abandoned drain which has become a death trap. And later, countdown to 2021 census launched projects to cost Ghana 521 million uh, cities. We have details coming up. My name is Wisdom Heather. Many thanks for your time this morning. Now, let's begin the stories from the camp of the president who says he has rubbished the public outcry over the increasing challenges facing the quality of education at the senior high level following what critics describe as poor implementation of the policy. Now, contrary to concerns being raised by school heads, teacher unions and parents, the president who was speaking at the University of Cape Coast over the weekend said the WASI results tells the full story. Now, UCC conferred on him an honorary doctor of philosophy in education leadership degree. The Honorary Doctor of Philosophy in Educational Leadership degree conferred on President Nana Kofado by the University of Cape Coast over the weekend is in recognition of what the university described as his bold policies in the educational sector, particularly the implementation of the free senior high school policy. By this recognition, Nana Adodankwa Akofado becomes the 40th recipient of the honorary degree and the second president in Ghana after former president John Ajekum Kufo to receive such an award from the Cape Coast University. The event attracted top government appointees, party executives and well wishes. Vice Chancellor Professor John Senya Kumbuampong, among other things, appealed to the president to facilitate the construction of a new hall, which will be named after him when completed. Over the past four years, more than a million graduates from the junior high schools have benefited from this policy. Payment of school fees is now not a barrier to any child assessing senior high school education in Ghana. The bold and decisive policy, which is iconic in the fourth republic of the country, is also in fulfillment of Goal 4.1 of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Chancellor of the University, Dr. Sam Jonah, in his address highlighted the benefit of the policy, particularly needy students may have missed the opportunity and the potential exponential increment in Ghana's human resource base. Our university, the University of Choice, since its attainment of full university status in 1972, has sought to identify and award outstanding personalities whose achievements encompass any one of the following. First, distinguished service to the university. Second, distinguished service to the country and or the international community. In his acceptance speech, the president lashed out at critics and pledged to do his utmost best to uphold the highest standard associated with the award. This accolade has been conferred on me because of the introduction and acceptance of the free SHS policy promoted by my government, which has expanded dramatically access to ed ed education, enabling hundreds of thousands of young men and women from all corners of our country to go to senior high school. By the outstanding results of the first graduates of the policy in the most recent WASI examinations, of the 465 who obtained eight A's in the exams, the Akufuado graduates from Ghana, as they have become known, were responsible for 411 of them. Not only has access been widened, but quality has also been maintained, indeed even enhanced. 
Now, former Minister for Education, Professor Nana Jane Opoku Ajiman, uh, says government must open up and seek consensus on how best to address critical issues affecting the quality of education, particularly at the senior high level before it's too late. The respected academician, who is also Ghana's first female vice chancellor, says the public outcry more than four years after the implementation of the free SHS policy reflect anger and disappointment, a situation that calls for total recall. She's been speaking to TVX Waza News. What we have heard is about students being given past questions to learn. We have also heard and we have seen students who wrote an exam, came out, and it was like, you know, we've had an earthquake in this country. It wasn't like one... Um, school or two schools. You are referring to students who are protesting that. This same group whose expected, this same group whose performance is supposed to be so outstanding that we shouldn't be talking. It is the group I'm referring to. Okay, and they went and wrote the exam. We heard of the leakage of exams. We heard of invigilators being compromised. We've heard many many things, and we also saw the students come out and speak about, no, this is not what we were told would happen. Now, these students have A's and we are happy. It's up to us. Well, join us in 20 minutes for the full interview uh, on that particular matter. Now, the 2021 Housing and Population Census will cost the state 521 million cities. Now, over the weekend, President Nana Kofuado, who officially launched the count towards the census, appealed to all Ghanaians to participate. Finance Minister Ken Oforiata, however, said... It's a necessary exercise that has potential benefit for planning and most especially to help track revenue leakages. The housing census will provide a treasure trove of data to support the development process and our regional and continental aspirations. Now, government statistician Professor Samuel Kakraba Inin, who addressed the event, said all enumerators have been trained and deployment of necessary tools have begun. We are persons in Ghana that our systems, our logistics, and our personnel are all ready for the preceding activities ahead of 27 June 2021, specifically with the start of our 76,500 field officers which will be followed by the chalking and listing of structures starting from the 13th of June, 2021. The census is themed, you count, get counted. Let's turn attention to the financial space and financial analyst Joe Jackson, who is also operations director for deposit-taking institution, Dalex Finance, says it is too early for those criticizing the proposed National Development Bank. Now, he says, though the concerns are legitimate, who government appoint to serve as the first board of directors will inform any further action. Says the 170 million euro loan secured from the European Central Bank for the establishment of the National Development Bank comes with a five year moratorium and a 0.5% interest payable between 15 and 20 years. Finance Minister says, unlike existing national banks, the proposed new one is to ensure that institutions are able to borrow on their own credit history and balance sheet without further burden on the central bank. But critics are questioning the wisdom behind the decision when GCB Bank, Agri Development Bank and the National Investment Bank, for example, need extra recapitalization to function effectively. Others are also questioning the rationale when government is spending close to 22 billion cities to close the financial sector when it collapsed banks that needed only 9 billion cities to survive. But Finance Minister Ken Oferata insists such cynicism must not be tolerated. Move into a very positive spin for the country as to where we are going and see whether we can rid ourselves of some of the cynicism that, you know, uh, has, has pervaded us. Um, but, but the issue of even the nature of the Development Bank is just so different um, from what um, 
the retail banks um, that um, the, the Bank of Ghana had to close um, down, um, uh, and, and so it, it's difficult to 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 align it, uh, except there's some sinister motive that, that somebody had. But but let's remind ourselves that the the AQR, the Asset Quality Review um, documents, were done in 2015, which indicated, you know, that these um, institutions. Uh, were literally bankrupt, and it was really the courage uh, of the president and really the professionalism of the central bank that you know took the bull by the horn and said, you know, let's clean this up. Skeptics say the proposed National Development Bank may not necessarily operate differently from traditional non-performing ones in terms of their original mandate, that is, direct support to the agri and other sectors like industry. It comes amidst fears that management structure could even be filled by cronies rather than results-oriented professionals. Financial analyst and operations director of Dalex Finance, Joe Jackson, who spoke on Current Affairs program Morning Update, says the composition of the board of the new bank is key and that should be of interest to Ghanaians as taxpayers. I will start with the board and we'll be watching carefully to see who is appointed to the board. If the board appointees are independent-minded people, not partisan uh, politicians who are being rewarded for loyalty to a particular part of the divide, then that will be the first sign that we are trying to mitigate it. You see, what happens is that in this country, we treat appointment to the board of state institutions as a reward. So when I come to power and you bring your CV, see, board be mammy got last way. That's what we do. Now what we forget is that there is real work to be done on the board. There is real value to be delivered at the board. Now resident of Kaswa New Zongo appealing to the MP for the area. Hawa Kumsing to use her influence in government to help complete an abandoned storm drain which has become a death trap. This is the current state of the project, which was stalled about five years ago. It is now overgrown with weeds, filled by silt, and household waste virtually blocking the free flow of water during heavy downpour. Aggrieved residents of Kaswa New Town Zongo in the Eutu Senya East Municipality of the Central Region says the associated erosion whenever it rains is virtually destroying buildings in the area. What makes their current situation worse is the temporary wooded bridge improvised for easy access across the storm drain. See this building. The MP is there. We have going there several times. The MP is on my ass. Sometimes right, you can come here, she can come here and just pass. You don't mind us. And when you said, they said they are not doing road, they are not doing gutters. But see this building, there's a people inside. Flood is broke the wall and the, at the same time, the person is inside the room. And can you ask me that? When there's the person inside, the, what happened to the person? They claim it has now become a death trap with school children heavily exposed to danger, especially during the rainy season. Some of those who spoke to TV XYZ News are now looking up to their MP, Mavis Hawakumsin, who is also the Minister for Fisheries, to step up by pushing the district assembly to fix the problem. <laughs> When contacted by the TV SOZ news team, the assemblyman for Kaswa Zongo electoral area, John Edua, virtually threw his hands in the air 
it follows what he described as lip service after several petitions demanding and seeking completion of the project seems to have been shelved. 2016, uh, a change of government ban. I say, because of wage, a gathering. And that's all time will allow this morning for the news in brief or morning update. As always, do log on to myxyzonline.com for more stories. Nana Abena Sewa is standing by for a conversation. Good morning.